on the dotted line. Let Philadelphia freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, blue, never give up. You represent America. Praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. Praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I Exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. Two more weeks and my turn is done. Let the war go to blazes. I shall put my feet up and keep my head down. Eighteen days till enlistments run out and all my soldiers march home. What am I to do? These are the times that try men's souls. Mother. First the Americans lost at Fort Washington, then at Fort Lee. And now General Howe's army is a mere 30 miles from Philadelphia. It is a dark hour in the colonies, and many have given up hope. With such crushing defeats, I wonder how long it will be before America loses its war. Moses has written me that the Continental Congress is fleeing the city for Baltimore. It would seem our leaders intend to run and leave us to the English. Ugh. It looks like the Rebels' Congress is just like their army, retreating. I wish I was with General Washington. I would never retreat. Despite their spirit and bravery, the Patriots are just a tiny David before the huge Goliath of His Majesty's forces. Moses, did I startle you? You're leaving, Ezekiel? Word is our army cannot keep the British from marching into Philadelphia, and I'm no hero. Neither am I. But Ben Franklin is staying open for business. What's this? It's from my little French friend, Henri. He's gone to La Bottle? Let me see. Going to... Oh, the battle! Guess that boy's even more foolhardy than you! This cursed tossing! We live in turbulent times, Hastings. It's best to roll with it. Speaking of rolls... No, thank you. I have to take this wretched voyage to France for business. But why you, Franklin? Your foolish revolution is over. You'll never get France to join your rebellion against the English. And when your soldiers' enlistments are up at the end of the month, you won't even have an army. General Washington will have men. Who? Washington wins no battles. No one will want to serve with him. The general knows the stakes. Before the month is up, there'll be a battle he will win. And if he doesn't, if he loses again, who will join then? If no one else, I shall. You don't look well. More turkey? Two more weeks and my turn is done. Let the war go to blazes. I shall put my feet up and keep my head down. James, there you are. Is something wrong? Him and those like him. They're counting the days till they leave. I don't understand. They're sick, half frozen. So, 
They're fighting for liberty. James, be reasonable. They're not professional soldiers like the British. I'm going to talk to General Washington. There must be something he can do to put the fight back in his men. Fight? They can't even stand. <laughs> General Washington, good morning, sir. I wanted to ask you something. If it's a story you're looking for, my young journalist, you'll have one shortly. As a matter of fact, your time... General, re Reed just gave me the news. I can't believe you offered command of the New Jersey forces to General Lee. He's repeatedly defied you. He's... General Green. Please excuse us. James, don't eavesdrop. Yeah! This is big news. Didn't you hear what Green said? General Washington is giving General Lee command of the forces in New Jersey. So? So, General Lee refused to help Washington when he needed it. And now Washington allows Lee free reign in New Jersey. Oh, so if Lee wins a battle, he'll be hailed as a hero. And the Americans' best general. Exactly. But why would Washington do something like that unless... That's it. He's got some big surprise to turn things around. Yikes! What are you doing here? I stole the way. Oh, onions. They were delicious. Have I missed the battle? You saw the letter General Lee wrote Reed. By accident. Lee wishes you replaced by himself. Sir, please, if you let him act independently in New Jersey, a victory would practically guarantee that your name would be blackened. Nathaniel, I know all that. But the objective of this war is not sparing my reputation. It is freedom. We've been on the run, Nathaniel. We need a victory against the British. General Lee is a professional soldier. I am not. He is English and knows their tactics. I have only determination and a small quantity of good sense. No, General Lee is our last best hope. I knew Washington had a reason. General Washington, an urgent dispatch. General, what is it? It's Lee. He's been captured. The British defeated Lee's troops? No, there was no battle. It appears Lee was taking his ease at an inn, six miles from his troops. All he had with him were six men. The arrogant fool! Eighteen days till enlistments run out and all my soldiers march home. What am I to do? General Washington! It's Thomas Paine. General. Thomas? Sarah, James, and uh, Henri. You know my young friends. Mr. Paine, we met a year ago in Philadelphia when he was writing Common Sense. Tom, I asked to meet, thinking you could write a few words to celebrate a victory. It appears I must ask a great deal more. We're looking for Paine, a writer? Huh. We should be looking for swords and big guns. I'm worried about Mr. Payne. I know he told Washington he'd write something to rouse the men's spirits so they'll stay on. But he looks so troubled. Sarah! Good evening. Forgive us. We don't wish to impose. Not at all. It's I who should ask pardon. I despise moody men who fret over a broken thing eternally rather than take two minutes and a nail to fix it. My difficulty is I can't seem to find the nail. You don't know what to write? You know, whenever I have trouble getting started, I try humming. James, leave the man alone. It's all right. I started putting down thoughts weeks before the general summoned me. Only the words keep tangling in knots. But you must know what to say. Your words brought them here in the first place. What can I say to hold them? What have I the right to say? They've all fought so well and so hard. Perhaps it's kindest for it to end now. Soon as I'm old enough, I and others like me will take up the fight. And so you would. All that we fail in will fall to you. Write about victory. Write about glory. No, they've had enough false promises. What is he writing? 
These are the times that try men's souls. I'll be moving quickly. The General requested I see to the printing and have copies back before Christmas. Still certain you want to come with me? It's a long walk. But why before Christmas? Enlistments aren't up till month's end. Time waits for no man or woman to Philadelphia. I just came from there, and you want me to walk back? Sorry, Henri, but the army can't spare any horses. Come, Henri. It's only 30 miles. Philadelphia, at last! <sighs> Boom, at last! No place like it. I'm not so sure. Where is everybody? Looks like people left in a hurry. Here comes someone. Pardon me, where is everyone? They fled town. We're going to my cousins in Baltimore. We'll be safer there. Safer? Washington can't stop how? The revolution's over. I have no intention of staying in Philadelphia. Look! The door's wide open. I guess I offended the wrong people. I managed to drive them off, but they still did some damage. I shouldn't be speaking to you. You ran off and only left a note. I didn't want to miss the battle. The battle's everywhere, Henri. As you can see, this is a citizen's war. This should make you feel better. Thank you. What is happening? Why are patriots leaving the city? Can you blame them? Even Congress has left. Then we got here just in time. Thomas has written something that will change their minds. I was hoping you'd be able to print something up. <sighs> Nothing would please me more. Unfortunately, they tore the lever off the press. It'll take time to fix it. Time is yet another thing our revolution is short on. We'll have to find a different press. Don't worry. Philadelphia is full of printers. Oops. Robert Bell. He made a fortune printing common sense. Somehow, I doubt that old Scotsman would mind earning a bit more. Keen, that traitor! Are they following? Yes, and quickly! Then let us go, quickly! I think that lost them. Good, because we're here. I'm sorry, Tom. I can't help you. It's not long, and it's urgent. Requested by Washington himself. Aye. He retreats mighty fast. Think you can catch him? That isn't funny. I didn't mean it to be. Come, Robert. You alone had grit enough to publish common sense. Aye, but times are more dangerous now. I'm not a dreamer like you, Thomas. I'm a simple businessman. Bobby Bell. Small enough to hide behind a shilling. If I heard any other man say that of you, I'd have knocked him to the ground. Uri, it's this way! Uh, it's locked! He must be in there. It's no use, James. He won't come to the door. I can't believe it. Six printers all said no. What are they afraid of? Perhaps getting knocked to the ground and having their press broken. Don't they understand that if they want freedom, they have to help fight for it? 
Ah. What do we do now? How about run? Wait! Payne? Thomas Payne? Yeah! Yes? Sir! <laughs> I am an immense admirer. I wonder if you might spare me a few moments. I'm always delighted to share my thoughts with a fellow citizen. However, at the moment, you find me somewhat pressed. Yes, I've heard of your dilemma. But I'm not a citizen! I mean, I am a citizen, but I'm also a journalist. The Pennsylvania Journal. And my paper has a press. Well, what are we waiting for? Helping. You read the words, we set the type. Believe me, Sarah, you're helping. Just read what I wrote. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. Go on. But you're also tired. Us? Tired? Come now. Whoa! Tea, anyone? Ah, uh, Cooper, this is hot water. Oh no, I forgot to put in the tea. <sighs> but he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Let it be told to the future world that in the depth of winter, when nothing but hope and virtue could survive, that the city and the country, alarmed at one common danger, came forth to meet and repulse it. Oops. Sarah's right. You must rest. You can't do this by yourself. I can stay awake. Maybe I could help. Enough. I'll help Mr. Payne set time. You read. I fear not. I see no cause of fear. In the end, we will be the victors. For though the flame of liberty may sometimes cease to shine, the embers will never expire. That's the last of it. Thank goodness Moses was able to help. Let's get moving. We've got to get these to General Washington. And don't worry. Cooper and I will find someone to help us print your words in a pamphlet. We'll distribute them all over Philadelphia. Uh, monsieur, I think we need your firewood trick again. Get out of here. I'll try and give you a few minutes lead. And leave you to face this bunch? Uh-oh, more bunch! Wait! It's Bobby Bell! And that's Gaylord! And Huntington! The three printers who turned us away? What do they want? Payne, it comes to me if this skinny lad Cooper can make a few coppers off ye. Twould be a crime for us not to make a pound. You'd be wanting this set in the pamphlet form. Yes, but... And what's this now? 
Hold fast, gentlemen. Show them your mettle. Look at them run. Do what you will with me, but you, Pain, were born a traitorous Englishman and shall die one. True. I am an Englishman. I fight for the English and for the Americans, and I fight for you, because I fight for an idea. And if you lack the sense to value the right to speak your heart or defend your personal ideals, then I'll fight for your child's right. Well, uh, you and your words, you're just trying to confuse me. This isn't the end of it. No, but it could be a beginning. If he reads what Thomas has said, you are starting to talk like the enemy. What are you talking about? I don't sound anything like a Tory. No, I meant like a grown-up. <laughs> There's a story breaking here and you're busy writing your mother? Hold your britches. I'll be right there. Dearest mother, when I first arrived in Washington's camp, I wrote how I couldn't imagine these humble ragtag soldiers holding out for even a day against the slumbering giant that is England. Now seeing the determination in the eyes of these colonists, I find myself wondering if even England is giant enough to stop them. 